Hey, Stephen Young here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts, doing a, a supercar walk around. Now, what do you do if you want a 427 Cobra but don't have $1.9 million to spend on a real one? Well, you buy yourself a modern replica. In fact, the 427 Cobra and the 289 are some of the most replicated cars on the planet. And since the late 1970s, there have been plenty of companies making fiberglass replicas of the AC Cobra body that allow folks to build their own. And you can do that for a lot less money than two million bucks. This one here is based on a Factory 5 uh, package, which is a company out of Wareham, Massachusetts, run by Dave Smith, a good dude, a real ramrod of a human being. And basically from scratch, uh, you can build yourself an AC Cobra or 427 or small block or LS, you choose, that has the looks of a vintage car but without that $2 million price tag. But better yet, fiberglass is far more forgiving. Now a real 427 Cobra, if you have the privilege of looking at one or even touching one, you'll realize that the aluminum is about three times as thick as a beer can. In other words, if you wrap on it, you can easily put a dent in it, let alone going down the road picking up a stone and the rock will actually puck the aluminum from the inside out. Aluminum bodies kind a stink in daily use, whereas fiberglass, it's as rugged as a boat. These are actually thick yet light. Now this one here is nicely rendered. It has a lot of the original touches, the original AC bumpers. These are steel and these are actually made by companies to the exact specification of the original AC bumpers. Has that beautiful sort of catfish face with the oil cooler uh, vent at the bottom screened headlights, the original Lucas turn signals, and that 427 body, which has the exaggerated wheel flares, unlike the 289 small block cars, which are more sedate. These are animals in any form, whether they're original aluminum cars or replicas like this one here. Uh, the beauty thing on this, of course, is the side pipes, which look the part of the original 427. Of course, the 427 Cobra by Ford, that logo right there, infamous in 1965, 6, and 7, when the originals came out, of which only 365 or so were built. But since then, there are going to be tens of thousands of replicas on a planet like this one. Now, let's take a peek under the hood and see what we find. And there it is, a, a Ford small block, very modern, has a, an SSI dual plenum intake manifold basically a tune for ram effect. We can see the tubes here, the runners. If this was upright, it would be basically like a tunnel ram, which it bolsters low end torque. But again, small block Ford here with um, serpentine drive up front and an MSD electronic distributor ignition at the front, no points to deal with. Got to be at least 300 horsepower. And in a car that might weigh 2,600 pounds, this has the power to weight ratio of a Boss 429 Mustang, if not better. Uh, inside, of course, the original fiberglass well, the shape of the doors is correct, but in fiberglass, not aluminum, which is just fine. The door latches are here on the inside, just as they were on the original 427 and 289 Cobras, right there. Deep bucket seats with Simpson four-point harnesses. Good stuff right there, keep you in place. But again, a nice mixture of modern and retro. The original Cobra-style steering wheel, very expensive piece, the aluminum and the wood. And this one here, five-speed transmission, something that Ford did not have in 1965. This, of course, has overdrive, which means top speed on this thing, closed course, please, probably close to 150 miles an hour in overdrive. Uh, again, closed course, please. <laughs> Other upgrades are the cargo box, if you will, right here. Original Cobra's really no place to put your paperwork, but here, we have a little card, a little box right here, which has three cup holders on it. So you can put your registration in there, maybe a, a lunch, a bagged lunch. And then of course the rest of the dash is pretty much the way they looked back in the 1960s. Less can be a lot more. The single hoop roll bar, very much a safety touch and original. The flared rear wheel openings and even the Lucas logos on the brake lights are present and accounted for. Now, a lot of folks complain about Corvette Stingrays from, say, 63 up. They don't have an opening trunk. Well, Cobra did. Let's pop the trunk open and see what we find. And yeah, there it is right there. Pretty big trunk, room for all kinds of stuff. The batteries in the back, leather belt as they were back in the day. And this is the most important thing right here. This is the assembly manual from Factory 5. Factory 5 Racing right here with the VIN. And this basically, Factory 5 says, built, not 
bought. In other words, the pride of ownership and building of a Factory 5 car was uh, part of the experience. Now this one has been professionally built, but these can be built by, uh, by beginners and just people with a good mechanical sense. But this is the build manual here, and it shows all the goodness that's baked into these. And these are indeed heavy duty vehicles. Uh, the Ford 8.8 inch, five liter style rear axle nearly bulletproof, coil spring suspension in the back. And one thing I love about this is the correct rolling stock. These look like knockoffs, but again, these are the wine glass wheels that are made, I believe, by uh, either Edelbrock or American Racing. But again, looks like a knockoff without the inconvenience, has lug nuts, but again, that as cash finish on the spokes. Just a great choice. These are the original looking wheels that would have been seen on an actual 427 Cobra back in the day. Uh, let's take a peek at the nose of this once again, and just that timeless design. Uh, some say that Aston Martin copied AC when they came out with their Aston Martin DB series. Now, of course, you gotta remember that the AC Cobra is an evolution of the AC Ace, and the Essaya, as they called it, six-cylinder car from the mid-50s in England. And of course, the Aston Martin was around that same time, but that sort of uh, catfish snarl at the front was something seen on Aston Martins and Cobras. And in fact, more recently, Ford, in their ownership of Aston Martin, utilized that snarling face look on on everything right down to the Ford Fusion. But you see it here too. And again, this is kind of a Ford. Let's remember that at this point in time, Carroll Shelby and Ford were very much in partnership when these cars were built back in the 1960s. But again, that was then, this is now. This is a great example of how you can have yourself a 427 Cobra experience for a fraction of that $1.9 million purchase price of an actual car without the hassle of the aluminum. Fiberglass is way more durable.